Good evening. I'd like to call to order the March 5th, 2012 meeting of the Town of Los Gatos Joint Town Council and Parking Authority meeting. May we have the call of the roll, please? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Council Member Stephen Leonardis? Here. Council Member Diane McNutt? Here. Council Member Joe Prasinski? Here. Vice Mayor Barbara Spector? Here. Mayor Steve Rice? Here. As is our tradition, uh, we have a young person to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance tonight. Uh, somebody who will, is a future leader in our community, although after I read this to you about what she has already accomplished, you would probably say she's already a leader as opposed to a future leader. So it's my pleasure to introduce Michelle Logar, a 10th grader at Los Gatos High School. She has a long and distinguished school and community service resume. She's a Community and Senior Services Commissioner for the town from 2011 to 2012, uh, an Excellence in Community Service Award 2009 and 10, California Youth Scholar. She attended the National Young Leaders State Conference. She helped with the Friends of the Library Once in a Generation campaign. I wonder how that happened. Uh, she was the editor of the CT English yearbook in 2009 and 10, and she volunteered at CT English 2008 and 9, an Alzheimer Day Center volunteer 2010 and 11, and a Saratoga Retirement Community volunteer 2010 and 2011. In the arts and culture activities, she's in the choir at Los Gatos High School and volunteers for that, Theater in the Mountains volunteer 2006 to 2011, and the Kennelly School of Irish Dance. She's been performing for nine years. In sports, she's on the cross country team, 2010 and 11, and she's on the track and field team uh, in 2011. And on Tuesdays, she, oh no, that was just Mondays, I'm sorry. <laughs> so please welcome Michelle Logar. I pledge.
pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <laughs> Let's give her a big hand. One more time. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> Next is our closed session report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. There was no closed session tonight, and there is nothing to report out. Okay, thank you. Uh, if you wish to speak on any item on tonight's agenda, in front of you, since nobody's sitting in the front row, our uh, little buff cards in the back of the row in front of you. Would you fill out one of those cards and you can turn those in to the clerk on my left, your right, and we'll get you in sequence for speaking on an item on tonight's agenda or under verbal communications for items that are not on tonight's agenda. Next is council matters. Any uh, council matters? Council member Leonardis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as I was out this weekend enjoying the weather, as most of us probably were, I had an opportunity to visit some parks in our surrounding uh, communities, and it got me to thinking about our own parks and how we will be opening two parks this year, one being the sports complex and one the reopening of the pageant park right behind the Civic Center here. And um, one of the things that I noticed was, particularly at the sporting parks that I visited, um, they have smoke-free policies, and I just wanted to um, ask our staff, probably best addressed to the town manager, if we have anything on the horizon regarding um, smoke-free policies coming to our parks in Los Gatos. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, we've actually received a grant to look at uh, from the tobacco-free program of the county and we'll be bringing back to the Parks Commission and the council a series of smoking uh, policies related to parks as well as more broadly and those will likely be going to the Parks Commission and the council later this spring uh, funded by the grant. Thank you. Okay. I have one thing to report out and that was on the 25th of February I held my first uh, meet the mayor session held in the conference room of the new library. About 20 people came by over the course of the two hours, so I was really pleased to see that. I was prepared to be sitting there and tapping away on my computer, but I never even had a chance. Uh, what was interesting was that some people had specific issues that they wanted to talk about, whether they were developments in town or questions about town services, and probably the most gratifying thing was that two different people came in with the specific request of how do they volunteer in town. So that was a great uh, session and we'll be continuing those on the fourth uh, Saturday of each month from two to four in the library conference room. Manager matters. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of the council, three items for you this evening. First, as directed by the council at your last meeting, the new library temporarily expanded its hours this past Saturday, now opening from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. every Saturday through June. Second, the town's work with the City of San Jose on Blossom Hill Road was completed last week, resulting in a much improved driving surface and the clearance of vegetation and other potential land hazards. In addition, Royce Street downtown is also completed. Last, this morning was a special time for the town of Los Gatos. As other jurisdictions are facing uh, fiscal challenges, we saw the official promotion of three talented law enforcement officers, Police Captain Matt Frisbee, Sergeant Clinton Tata, and Corporal Aaron Lunsford. Together, they will lead the talented teams that provide evening and weekend coverage and services to Los Gatos and Montes Arena. I now have the honor of introducing tonight's Did You Know? This is an ongoing series to introduce or remind Los Gatos residents of the many services and opportunities available right here at home. 
Presenting on the Los Gatos Jubilee year is Assistant Town Manager Pamela Jacobs. Thank you, Mayor and Council, ladies and gentlemen. Did you know that it is the 125th anniversary of the town of Los Gatos? The town was incorporated August 10th, 1887, and in that it's 2012, this is our 125th anniversary. The technical term for that is the quasquicentennial, and since that doesn't roll off the tongue so easily, we are calling it the Jubilee Year. The town launched the Jubilee Year with the opening of the new library on February 11th, and we will be celebrating it all year along with all of our regular activities such as Fourth of July and Arbor Day and Screen on the Green. And we're also inviting the service organizations, business community, educational community, faith groups, nonprofits to celebrate along with us. And to that end, if any of these groups have an event that they would like to uh, incorporate a jubilee theme with we will add it to a calendar that we will be maintaining the main event for the year however will be the anniversary celebration itself on august 10th to the uh, august 18th 2012 of course yeah <laughs> um, so on august 18th and that will be in pageant grounds as council member leonardis noted is right behind town council, town hall, and we are currently renovating pageant grounds and we will be dedicating it at this, cel at this celebration on August 18th. Stay tuned to see a Jubilee website along with the town's website and we will be maintaining a calendar and we do invite organizations to contact us and they can contact me in particular to get their event on that calendar and we will all be celebrating the jubilee year together thank you thank you we're done okay next we're going to move on to the consent items and uh, we're going to be pulling items four and five for uh, further clarification and discussion on items one through Six, are there any council members that wish to pull items, other items? Seeing none, any members of the public that wish to pull other items? Seeing none, I will entertain a motion on the consent calendar. Move to okay. approve the consent calendar, um, less items four and five. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. We will hear items four and five directly after verbal communications. Which brings us to verbal communications. This is a time for anybody to speak for up to three minutes on any item that is not calendared on tonight's agenda. I don't currently have any cards. And I don't see anybody rushing to the podium. Going once, going twice, no verbal communications this evening. Okay, we'll go back to Item number four, and we'll start with a uh, report from the town manager. <clears throat> items four and five are companion items before you tonight, both arising out of the town's recent consideration and approval of the Riviera Terrace project. Through that project, the town learned of significant local control and legal risks resulting from the application of state law on projects within the town. For example, without a certified housing element, the town has significantly limited grounds on which to deny residential projects on any privately owned property within the town. The town attorney will speak more to this later. While these risks were known and communicated last September when the council last heard this matter, the strengthening economy and rising residential project inquiries warrant action at this time to ensure that the town retains local discretion for the projects appropriate in Los Gatos. In addition, future funding for transportation improvements and affordable housing will almost certainly be restricted to jurisdictions with certified housing elements. Achieving a state certified housing element is solely based on meeting the state's requirements for clearly demonstrating how Los Gatos is planning for its so-called fair share of regional housing needs, 
including affordable housing here in Los Gatos. Typically, the state expects communities to show sufficient parcels zoned for 20, more or, 20 or more units to the acre to meet the target set for that community. However, for select communities, and especially those like Los Gatos, alternative and less prescriptive strategies are approved. The leading and most innovative one is an affordable housing overlay zone on select parcels to allow meeting the community's target. In this model, the parcel retains its underlying zoning as its use by right, subject to the town's normal application review process and standards. In addition, an affordable housing overlay zone is established as well, providing an alternative affordable housing use subject to the standards set in that overlay zone. In 2010, the General Plan Committee Planning Commission and Town Council approved six parcels for potential affordable housing overlay zones, and those were included in the approved draft housing element. Subsequent to that action, the state required additional language changes before they would certify the town's housing element. That is the language that came before you last September and again this evening. Since September, the town has accelerated its consideration of the affordable housing overlay zones through the Public General Plan Committee as directed by the council. The General Plan Committee, meeting almost every other week, has and will be considering the appropriate standards for each parcel and zone, including height, density, parking, setbacks, and the like, to ensure neighborhood compatibility. Then those zones, with their embedded standards, will be brought to the Planning Commission and the Town Council for final review and action. Tonight's action is not to approve any one affordable housing zone. It is simply to ratify the previously approved housing element with the changes set by the state to achieve a certified housing element. The approval does include the requirement to consider and act on the affordable housing zones within one year. But that work is well underway as per your direction in September. Should the town council choose not to approve one or more of the affordable housing zones or to approve them in ways which do not meet the housing standards set by the state, then the town will have to pursue alternative locations to meet the housing targets set for Los Gatos or to then again face the risks of not having a certified housing element. Nonetheless, in light of recent developments and council concerns, staff does have two additional recommendations for your consideration with tonight's action, and those are reflected in the desk item you received. First, given that Ditto's Lane is a town-owned parcel and that the council's suspension of activities on Ditto's Lane was not known when the housing element was drafted, we are now recommending that Ditto's Lane be eliminated as one of the aff affordable housing overlay zones. This is also appropriate since the town will not likely be taking any further actions regarding Ditto's Lane until 2013 at the earliest, given statutory ambiguities, potential legislation, and possible litigation, all arising out of the state's elimination of redevelopment. The up to 32 units of affordable housing identified at Ditto's will need to be considered elsewhere through the rest of the affordable housing overlay zone process and discussions. Second, given what the town council, excuse me, second, given that the town council has directed accelerated consideration of the affordable housing overlay zones, we now believe that it is appropriate to request the state to remove the interim standards section which was housing action item 2.2, which might be in conflict with other town standards and policies, including item five on tonight's agenda. Judith Propp, the town attorney, will now provide more details on the risk to local autonomy and discretion faced without a certified housing element, as well as the limited standards available to reject or significantly modify any residential project without a certified housing element. Following her comments, Community Development Director Rooney, Attorney Prop, and myself will be available to an answer any questions you may have. Attorney? Thank you. 
As a follow-up to the town manager's comments, just wanted to reiterate what we had discussed in January when the uh, Riviera Terrace project came before the council, and uh, there were concerns raised by Planning Commission, council, and members of the community. As you may recall, there were very limited circumstances that without a valid housing element in place that the town can consider when approving any residential project, whether it's affordable or market rate. For example, in consideration of a project that comes before the council without a valid housing element in place, there's only five grounds that the state law allows for denial. And briefly, those um, are that you've already met your regional housing allocation needs, that there's a specific adverse impact that can't be mitigated. And adverse impact um, isn't necessarily uh, the general concept of an adverse impact under CEQA. It's that there's a identified public health or safety standard that can't be mitigated. Um, that the denying of the project or imposing the condition violates state or federal law that a project is zoned for agriculture or resource prevention when that land is surrounded by at least two sides of other agricultural or resource preservation purposes. And again, the final grounds that you could deny a project on if you don't have a valid housing element is that it's inconsistent with both the town's zoning ordinance and general plan land use, um, and the city has a revised housing element. So again, if the housing element isn't in place, there's very limited grounds on which to, to deny or specifically condition, impose particular conditions on a residential project that comes before you. The purpose of tonight bringing this back, uh, since there has been some uh, further discussions uh, at the General Plan Committee and more work done by staff on this, is to at least take interim steps to get the housing element in place if the council so desires, and then move forward with the implementation so that that will allow the town all the tools available under state and local law when considering future applications for residential development. Questions? Okay. Then I'm going to open the public hearing. I actually have cards on uh, item four. We'll start with Lisa Tuli. Good evening, honorable mayor and council members. My name is Lisa Tuli, and I own and reside at 120 College Terrace Unit L. And I would like to comment on desk item number four of the housing element, specifically the piece that addresses the new affordable housing overlay zone designation as it relates to the Ditto's Lane parcel. First of all, I would like to convey my support of the recommendation of desk item number four. I recognize the importance of the housing element as it sets forth the intention of the town. The affordable housing overlay zone is a purely a tool to provide economic incentives for developers of affordable housing and when applied judiciously can be an effective way to increase affordable housing capacity and inventory. The ev effectiveness is directly tied to site evaluation and selection. When one looks at the prior draft affordable housing overlay zone map, it is clear that Ditto's parcel is quite different in size and location than the others and if one were to view it on a topographical map, one would clearly see the constraints. I'm, I'm pleased that this has been recognized by town staff. Certainly, the town has already made strides in creating affordable housing without the affordable housing overlay zone as a tool. And since the town owns the land, there's even more assurance it could be set aside for such use at an appropriate density, height, and setback at a future date. I believe in the good governance, political process, and community input in Los Gatos. And I also appreciate the involvement of a number of residents who spent scores of hours participating in the Ditto's process and appreciate town council, count, town council acknowledging their work as part of participating in the process by acting to update the housing element. 
taking what we have learned over the last year in mind. This certainly is a best practice. Thank you. Question for you, uh, Ms. Tooley. Vice Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Tooley, um, given the concerns that you have had uh, apparently in the past, uh, are the recommendations that staff has presented this evening, do they address your concerns this evening? Yes, they address the concerns at hand right now. Um, I certainly have a vested interest in, in having that parcel developed at some point in time and will um, continue to be involved, but I think this is a good first step, acknowledging that the affordable housing overlay zone standards were not appropriate um, for where we are right now um, in the situation and also just the piece of land in, in general. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next card I have is Cameron Tooley. Good evening, Honorable Mayor and Council Members. Uh, thank you for letting me speak tonight. And um, I live, uh, my name is Cameron Tooley, and I live on 120 College Terrace at Unit L. And um, I wanted to thank staff in particular for um, acting quickly if with the uh, quick turnaround for um, uh, new uh, recommendations based on uh, my email. And um, appreciate that very much. Um, so that's my main point now, because the, uh, most of my points have been addressed. So I appreciate that. The only question I do have is that it sounds, it seems to me that the overlay zone is still being automatically placed based on this action HOU 2-2.1. It says, and amended the zoning map to apply the HO, the uh, overlay zone, or, uh, affordable housing overlay zone to each of the sites identified in the housing inventory, uh, sites inventory while leaving the existing zone in place. So it sounds like the overlay zone is still being put on top um, am I missing something? Or <laughs> the, uh, Mr. Mayor, if I may. Please. Um, the actual recommendation in the desk item is to delete Ditto's Lane from the uh, affordable housing overlay zone sites mm -hmm. and to remove the Ditto's Lane property from table 6.1 and all references of Ditto's Lane pertaining to affordable housing overlay zones. It doesn't eliminate all affordable housing overlay zones just for just Ditto's, Ditto's Lane. Lane. So that it just still will be applied to the other properties in the list? As required by the state. Yeah, okay. I just thought that was a clarification that I wasn't sure. Otherwise, my, those are my comments. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next card I have is Lee Quintana. Good evening, Lee Quintana, Five Palm Avenue. Um, <clears throat> thank you for addressing or explaining um, the background for tonight's uh, items, consent items four and five. Uh, I felt that the lack of specificity in, in the staff report was one of the reasons that there were so many comments sent in to the uh, department regarding the issue. Uh, unless you had been following the issue, the staff report didn't give you the necessary background to understand it. In, in addition, I would say, like the comment that the changes that were recommended tonight to um, be implemented seems to me should have been a easily uh, recognized by staff based on the conversation at the September 19th meeting um, and uh, could have been, again, implemented or included into the staff report so there was less confusion. I still believe that um, there is confusion between the, the meanings of <laughs> BMP units, uh, the town's density bonus, policy, the state's density bonus law, um, and uh, how uh, bonus units or extra units are counted or not counted towards the general plan uh, density. And um, specifically, the confusion between the town's density bonus policy and, and the way things were considered, the, according to the technical appendices, uh, the town's density bonus policy has a limited application. 
and it specifically says that only two projects totaling 29 units have been approved since 1990 under that, that specific law and, or, or policy, and that none have been approved since 2002. The two of it that were approved between 1990 and 2002 with Creekside Village and um, the open doors, uh, that's very different than the way that was applied to Riviera Terrace, which I still have questions about. And um, I'm not going to go into them because I've stated my objections continually, and I think they're still valid. It's not clear to me why not having a certified housing element also relieves the town from not being consistent with the state density bonus law, again, referring to Riviera Terrace. Um, and uh, the, also, there is absolutely, we've addressed the um, affordable housing overlay zone. Uh, considering uh, that the two are connected, four and five, can I just go ahead and do the whole thing together? Let, I'll have you come back when we get to five, because that's kind of where you're headed with your question. So why don't you give us a minute, we'll finish up four, and then we'll, we'll switch on to five. But they're connected. Okay, other questions, comments, or a motion on item four? I'm sorry, I didn't have, I have no further cards. Was there anybody else that wished to speak on item four? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Okay, now questions, comments, or a motion? Vice Mayor. All right, um, based upon uh, the testimony, but also the uh, modifications that have been suggested by the staff, uh, I'm going to move that the town council ratify the, um, the town council ratify the November 1st, 2010. What did you suggest we ratify? Approval of the 2007-14 uh, housing element with the re revisions incorporated and the following additional modifications as specified on paragraphs one and two of desk item four. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? Seeing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay, on to item five. Any staff report. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Towns Council members. The Town Council recently approved the Riviera Terrace Plan Development application, which was the first application of the town, the town processed under the state density bonus law. As the Council is aware, the state law requires the, a jurisdiction to grant a prescribed density bonus and concessions if an applicant requests the density bonus and provides the required amount of eligible, affordable residential units. The town, as the council is aware, also has a general plan density bonus policy, which is action item HOU 1.3, that has previously grant and has previously granted additional density for qualified projects through that application of that policy. Both the town's policy and the state density bonus law requirements were applied to the Riviera Terrace project, as the council is aware. During the public hearing on Riviera Terrace project, the application of the state's density bonus law and the town's general, dense, general plan density bonus policy caused both the planning commission and the town council some concerns. Um, based on this concern, staff is requesting the council interpret uh, whether the general plan policy action item HOU 1-3 or 1.3 should be applied to a project that the applicant has also requested the state density bonus provision. The intent of clarifying the interpretation of the general plan policy is not only to address any potential application that could be submitted, has not been submitted, but could be submitted prior to the adoption of the density bonus ordinance, um, but it will also provide direction on how action HOU should be incorporated into the density bonus ordinance that will be adopted in the next couple of months. Based on the discussions and concerns expressed during the town council review of Riviera Terrace, staff is recommending that action HOU 1.3 not apply to a project in which the applicant has also requested the state density bonus law. Since the resulting densities could exceed 35% of the allowable general plan densities within all zoning districts within um, that allow residential uses. 
this policy is contained in attachment one in the resolution that's contained in attachment one. Alternatively, should the council find that the application of both the town's general plan bonus density bonus policy as well as the state density bonus law should apply to a project, then we would recommend that you adopt a uh, resolution number two, which a resolution that's contained in attachment two. And staff be happy to answer any questions you may have. Questions of staff, starting with the vice mayor. Thank you. Uh, this is a question I directed uh, earlier today to the uh, town manager, and I'll bring it up. Um, and on page two of our staff report, uh, there is a, uh, we have uh, HOU uh, 1.3. Uh, and uh, even though that is something that we already have adopted, that it is ours, uh, I see that in paragraph B, there is, um, in my mind, there could be confusion uh, with the use of the word and uh, that combines the state bonus uh, uh, pr provisions and the town provisions, uh, and also paragraph C that allows for increased density uh, if there is projects that, for example, facilitate and encourage the use of transit, which seemed uh, very vague uh, to me as to when that could be. So what we already have in paragraphs B and C were of concern in light of what we are trying to accomplish this evening. And if possible, I would like staff to address that for everybody's benefit. Thank you, please. Thank you. Yes, um, this was brought to our attention. We did discuss this, and as the council is now aware, staff is proposing a cleanup of the housing element that would incorporate the items that were discussed in the last um, item number four before you, um, as well as we would clean this up. Specifically, C refers to um, granting a density bonus to, uh, to development that facilitates uh, and encourages the use of transit. And staff has always interpreted that to mean within the Vasona light rail area, so transit-oriented development. We would clarify that under C. And we would also clarify, based upon the action tonight that uh, the council takes on the policy interpretation, uh, subsection B, that if, if the council were to um, take the, or if the council were to give, give the direction by adopting uh, attachment one, we would then clarify in that language that it's either or, it's not both. Go ahead, Vice Mayor. Thank you, and what is your time frame? Assuming that we go down this path, what is your anticipated time frame? We, um, we'd like to finish up the, the affordable housing overlays, and we believe that can be completed by, um, depending upon, um, well, excuse me, based upon the action from the last item, we're now down to four more sites to review. So we think we can complete that by around June, and then we'd have an omnibus ordinance that would come through with all the changes to the housing element, and I think we'd do that easily during the summer. Okay, other questions of staff? Seeing none, I'll open the public hearing and Ms. Quintana, the only card I have. If you wish to speak to this item, please fill out a card and bring it to the clerk on my left, your right. Ms. Quintana. Okay, let's see if I can get my thoughts together based on what's been said. Um, number one, again, uh, the issue of the density bonus. Um, if you read the technical appendix, and I don't have it in front of me, so I don't have the page reference. It clearly differentiates between um, the town's density bonus program and um, the, the other programs, including the BMP. And the way that this density bonus is being used in uh, the modified housing element really refers to BMPs. Um, in regards to Riviera, initially the reason for the number of uh, units allowed uh, was stated because, the town, because of the town's density bonus program. That program is restricted in the past use, as I understand it and as stated in the technical report, to projects that are totally elderly or low income. Um, 
so it didn't apply. So then the town switched to, well, it's in the general plan policy that um, density uh, BMP units, density units don't count towards the uh, calculation of the density of the project. That didn't make sense either. Uh, on, based on many reasons, which I've explained before. But basically, I think what we have here now is the uh, housing element has been approved with just the uh, statement about the uh, possibly the density bonus not applying if you provided you pass that resolution here. But um, I'm sorry, my lost my trend of thought here, but there's been no explanation about how this all applies to projects that are not in the uh, affordable housing overlay zone. In other words, if a project is not in the affordable housing overlay zone and it comes in requested under the state density bonus law, or for that matter, does the state density bonus law still apply to the housing overlay zone? It's not clear depending on how you interpret these things on a 20 per acre, um, 20 units per acre project, you could have f anywhere from 24 to 40 units that would um, either qualify under the town's density bonus, under the town's BMP, or under the state density bonus. And that all hasn't been clarified. And I think that's part of the reason that the items were pulled the last time. Thank you. Councilmember Brzezinski. Um, may I ask Ms. Quintana a very quick question. You are aware we have two resolutions in front of us tonight. Uh, one, the first resolution excludes the town's density bonus if the applicant uh, asks for the state, and the second uh, allows us to, uh, to include both. Do you, you have one or the other of those resolutions that you support tonight? Well, I don't think they go to the, the, the real question of how you applied it to Riviera Terrace. Well, I, I'm just asking if, if either of those resolutions is more acceptable to you. Well, the one excluding the, the uh, doubling up on the town's density bonus and the state's density bonus is, is more acceptable, All but right. it really doesn't address the basic issue of how. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, other questions? Last call for other additional cards. I'm sorry, did you have something, Vice Mayor? <laughs> I did, but why don't we see if anyone else wants to speak? I see none, so I'll close the public hearing. Thank you. Um, Vice there, Mayor. There was an issue raised uh, by the speaker relating to uh, the applicability of the proposed resolution in situations other than um, overlay zones. As I understand it, this would apply generically, whether or not there is an overlay zone or not, and I would just ask staff to address that issue, please. Thank you. This would apply generically to all properties. Um, it, it, as, as staff is conceiving it now and working with the general plan committee, it wouldn't apply to the affordable housing overlay zones. Uh, for those zones, we're actually are now those five properties, we're looking at development standards, uh, affordability ratios, and architectural standards that would be unique to each of those properties. It's envisioned that those development standards and the incentives, the financial incentives and process incentives would offer incentives to the property to develop under the AHOZ and you would not therefore need any additional incentives through a density bonus. Any other questions, comments, or a motion? Councilmember Brzezinski. Mr. Mayor, I would like to move that we um, adopt the attached resolution that would be attachment one that uh, is recommended by staff to not apply the town's density bonus if um, the state density bonus is requested by an applicant. Second. Motion and a second, any discussion? Seeing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Moving on to other business. This will be item seven on the agenda, which is the approval of guiding principles and the process for considering options for the reuse of what was once and for many years our library. 
Staff report will be Assistant Town Manager Pamela Jacobs. Thank you, Mayor. As you noted, the opening of the new library presents an opportunity for the town to consider options for the reuse of the former facility. The mayor appointed a council ad hoc committee to support and guide staff in the development of guiding principles to provide a framework for the, that discussion and those decisions. The committee con is comprised of Vice Mayor Spector and Council Member McNutt. And the uh, committee is recommending the guiding principles that are included in your staff report as attachment one. The staff report provides some basic information about the former library facility. It's not in-depth information and further analysis will be needed as we consider options. Uh, more, more detailed uh, assessments of conditions will be needed. The report does identify two areas of improvement. One is the remodeling and expansions of restrooms would be needed with most any um, reuse of the facility and also a replacement of the air handling system would be uh, required. The staff report notes that the most limiting factor regarding the reuse of the facility uh, will be the parking requirements. We do not have the specific information about what those limits might be tonight, but that will have to be studied at the point that we are considering options. Um, it is likely that any use that generates significant amounts of weekday parking demand will be difficult to accommodate. Um, but again, we do need further study to calculate and d determine what the parking capacity might be. The staff report also lists some previously identified municipal needs that could be accommodated at the former library facility. And it um, also identifies that the capital improvement program that the town adopted, the current program, does identify some funding for the reuse of the facility. However, at this point, that funding is uncertain due to the Re, uh, uh, dissolution of the redevelopment agency, so that's um, pending at this point. There has been other community groups that have uh, who have expressed interest in reuse of the facility. So the uh, council subcommittee is recommending a process to consider those options, and they would uh, seek uh, the council's approval of proceeding with the process. And in that process, we would ask these community groups to complete a proposal form so there would be consistent information provided and that we would schedule an additional meeting, um, either a regular council meeting or a, a special meeting at which those community groups could present their proposals. So in summary, the committee is recommending guiding principles and a process so that community groups can present proposals for consideration. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Questions for staff? Seeing none, this is a public hearing. I have no cards, but I'll open it up if somebody wishes to speak to this item. Okay, seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. And look to council for questions, comments, or a motion. Council Member Brzezinski. Well, first, just want to clarify the request tonight of council is that we approve the guiding principles on attachment one and then the options for reuse in that process is indicated by the committee. That's really what we're focusing on tonight. Uh, is there any requirement or request by staff that we, we specifically deal with any of the, um, the space needs as outlined in the report? No, we are just seeking approval of the principles and agreeing that there, we will have a process for community proposals. All right, thank you. Vice Mayor Spector. Thank you. Um, a couple of things in looking over the staff report, um, and and I would look to uh, the other council members to get their their thoughts on it. Uh, one was that one of the or one of the entities I, I should say uh, that has expressed an interest in using the library is the former library uh, is the town itself, and so it would seem to me that if we adopt a form to be filled out that the town would also be filling that form out. So that would be a thought and a question. 
uh, and also uh, I would expand one element onto that uh, form, uh, which is a question as to the uh, asking the applicant to identify the location, if any, of their current use. Council members? Council member McNutt. Um, thank you, Mayor. I also had a suggestion on the proposal form uh, to be more explicit, either in a separate, separate question or under the description of proposed use and activities, to have the applicants uh, describe or justify how their proposed use meets the guidelines that, in theory, we're approving in a few minutes. Especially the overarching improves the quality of life of our residents. I'll jump in and I agree with both of those uh, comments. Other comments, questions, motion? Council Member Pruszynski. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, I will make a motion to approve the guiding principles as indicated in attachment one and the process for considering options with the amendments so specified um, by the Vice Mayor and Council Member McNutt. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Moving on. Item number eight is the vision statement for the North 40 to guide development and completion of the North 40 specific plan. Mr. Mr. Manager. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, you have a comprehensive staff report before you that includes the results of another ad hoc committee that you appointed on February 13th when you did a facilitated visioning exercise in this room to come up with what we called then the four pillars of a future vision statement for the North 40. That committee consisted of, uh, again, of Vice Mayor uh, Specter and Councilwoman McNutt, and their recommended vision is included in the vision statement for you. I won't provide all the background because that is available through the staff report. I did want to comment on the process question that we've raised for you that did not come directly from the ad hoc committee, and that is assuming you adopt a vision statement tonight with whatever uh, modifications the council may choose to make, where do we go from here? And of course, we'll go back to the North 40 Advisory Committee to have them continue the work. And what we've laid out are a couple options for you on page three. First would be to take the 1999 draft specific plan, apply the new vision to that, and also implement the prior council direction regarding residential development being a possibility on the site in compliance with the vision and the provision and funding of required infrastructure. That was one of the prior directions the council gave for updating the North or completing the North 40 specific plan and left out of the staff report would be consideration of phasing requirements for the development that could come from the property owners as well as town preferences for the phasing of uh, the development of that site. You're losing your audience. <laughs> you know, North 40 is mighty exciting and so is visioning. Um, second major option would be to go back to the North 40 Advisory Committee and have them take your direction through the vision and to take their prior work over the last eight months and start putting that in the framework of the vision statement that you've adopted. In either case, and attached to the document at the end is kind of some generic outlines, and these are not absolute fixed of high level of detail, medium level of detail, and general level of detail. It's really a continuum. In prior discussions, the North 40 Advisory Committee had determined that a medium level of detail may be appropriate for this specific plan. Given the council discussion starting back with the vision, it may be appropriate to provide direction on moving towards a more general level of vision to get the uh, specific plan wrapped up for this phase and to keep moving ahead incrementally rather than trying to do an all-encompassing detailed specific plan. Staff does believe whatever path is taken, it will be necessary to add more specificity than is in the draft specific plan. 
that is almost all encompassing vision statement. And we hope the North 40 Advisory Committee will be able to take your vision and add more meat to that specific plan if that's the path they choose, or you choose actually. So that concludes staff report. Uh, Assistant Town Manager Pamela Jacobs, Director Wendy Bruni and myself were all involved in supporting Diane and Barbara in the visioning process. So we can answer any other questions you may have. Okay, any questions of staff? Seeing none, once again, this is a public hearing. I have no cards on this item, but I'll give you a chance to rush to the podium if you'd like. Seeing none, it's a very quiet crowd tonight. We'll, we'll close the public hearing and I'll look back to council for comments, questions. Councilmember McNutt. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, when we were working on the drafts, um, you know, you go back and forth and edit and fine tune and so on. Uh, and for the most part, you know, I'm really happy with the way it ended up. But, but one um, editing decision we made at the last moment has kind of stayed with me as a question mark. So I wanted to bring it to the full council and get an opinion. And that's under uh, guiding principles on the third bullet. It currently reads, the North 40 will offer opportunities needed by our community. Um, at one point, we had the words residential and commercial before opportunities in order to define it. Um, and so, as I said, it's one of those things, as a writer, you always are going back and editing to they tear the paper out of your hands or the keyboard out of your clutch. But um, I, I just, uh, that's, that is one that's kind of stayed with me and I just wanted to see what council thought of leaving it as is or should it be more defined, opportunities more defined as residential and commercial or in some other way. Council Member Brzezinski. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, to, um, to respond to Councilman McNutt's question, I looked at that bullet and I, I also wondered whether or not the interpretation w of that particular issue, that is the word opportunities needed, um, would or is intended by the committee to reflect the unmet needs that seemed to be very um, consistent in um, the, the council's interest as we proceeded prior to um, embarking on the, um, the vision statement in the committee. Um, so that would be my question, and perhaps it is embedded there, but um, it seems more general here than I thought um, specifically the, the statement unmet needs would reflect. Vice Mayor. Thank you, and uh, Ms. McNutt, and I, maybe we remember it the same way. Uh, yes, um, in my mind, that was the bullet point that addressed the unmet needs. And then to expand upon uh, Ms. McNutt's uh, question, um, the reason uh, at that point that the words residential and commercial were deleted uh, was if you say residential and commercial opportunities, that would indicate that both residential and commercial would have to be uh, in the North 40. Now, you might say, well, of course they are, so what's the big deal? Uh, but that is imposing a certain limitation to, for example, a North 40 that might, may ch might, might choose to be uh, without residential or with all residential. Uh, and so, and before the school people begin, you know, having uh, seizures out there are uh, talking about, for example, uh, senior housing. Uh, so the reason to take out the residential and commercial when we had our last meeting was to give more uh, discretion to the ultimate developer. I'll, I'll weigh in on it. I, when I read that, I thought that it was unnecessarily vague, actually, myself. Um, oppor un offer opportunities needed by our community could be almost anything. Um, and I'll, I'll take on what both Councilmember McNutt and then modified by the Vice Mayor, um, maybe it should read something like, we'll offer residential and or commercial opportunities needed by our community. I'd be comfortable with something like that. I just, I, the way it reads is a little bit vague and, and uh, 
non-specific for a specific plan. Other comments? Councilmember Leonardis. To me, um, when we went through the discussion um, during the meeting on, what was it, February 23rd or 13th or something like that, I thought the idea was to keep it very broad and not so narrow. So I'm comfortable with it just the way it's written. I think that those other elements discussed by the fellow council members this evening will ultimately come out in, um, in the design or the, uh, you know, the other phases of this, this process. So um, I, I'm happy with it just the way it stands. I think it's uh, broad enough, not necessarily vague, but not necessarily too descript. Councilmember Pruszynski. My own sense is that it is too general. And as we get to guiding principles, I think they are a little bit more specific than vision. But in this case, if we were to state this as, and I think the focus is the unmet needs. If we say offer opportunities to accommodate unmet needs, unmet residential and commercial needs, then it's the, it, it, it uh, is the burden of the applicant to demonstrate that this particular residential component fulfills an unmet need or this particular commercial component fulfills an unmet need. Um, and therefore, it allows us to maintain this, this oversight in relationship to the unmet needs component. Because at a certain point, we could say, we have no unmet residential needs. If that's the case, then that particular bullet would be able to be used to, um, to affirm uh, a position that says that this is an exclusion. Uh, or in reverse that with commercial as well. So that would be my preference, that we specify to unmet needs and then we indicate commercial and residential, which should be in, interpreted as not expecting that each will be included, but that they will have to be validated by the application process. Other comments? I'm seeing none. Do I have a motion well we haven't come to consensus so. I, that's why I'm asking I'm looking for something vice mayor Spector I'm gonna go ahead and make a motion I'm trying to accommodate everything that I've heard up here and then I'll either get a second or people will try and modify it uh, I'm going to move to adopt the vision statement for the north 40 as uh, presented on page one of our staff report with the following modification that the third bullet under guiding principles be revised to state that the North 40 will accommodate residential and uh, will accommodate the town's residential and or commercial unmet needs. I'll second that. I'm comfortable with that language. Further discussion and then I think I'm gonna bifurcate this and deal with uh, the issues on page three as a separate motion. So we'll get the, uh, the vision and guiding principles first and then the process second. You're dying to talk, it's okay. Council Member McNutt. Well, this is, this is always the hard thing of doing committee writing. I don't accommodate, I don't think it's quite the right word, but uh, right this second, I can't come up with one <laughs> that um, that is right. It's not a horrible word, but it's not the quite the right word. <laughs> um, uh, does someone have a thesaurus? Um, he has one right there. Okay, address. Address is better for me, yeah. I can, can accept address. address. Okay, I've got the motion maker and I'll, as the seconder, I'll, I'll accept the modification to address. Any further conversation on this? Seeing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Who'd have believed? <laughs> After all we've gone through, we get through that. My compliments to the subcommittee. Uh, moving on to the second part of this, which is the process. 
Did the subcommittee have any specifics or do you want anybody else want to just start? Councilmember McNutt. Well, this member of this subcommittee wants to ask the two members of the other subcommittee who serve on the North 40 to uh, weigh in and lead this discussion because they've been so involved in it that I would like to hear their recommendation on what's the best way to go forward to make this really a productive uh, process. Vice Mayor Spector. Thank you. Uh, all right, this subcommittee member of both subcommittees. Um, I've actually given this issue a lot of thought, having been the person, uh, one of the two people working on the vision statement, knowing that we would get a vision statement, being asked, uh, you know, and thinking about what happens next. And so I do have thoughts, which I will share. Um, one is that uh, I, I think the first level is uh, mandatory, and that is that the vision statement be presented to the uh, advisory committee, uh, and that the advisory committee then, based upon that vision statement, which does create a direction from the council, uh, determine what are the array of uses that are appropriate under the vision statement. And I think that's something that the advisory committee is going to have to do. What becomes less clear to me is what happens after that. Um, I guess in one way it could stop at that point, but uh, at that point the advisory committee could also determine that it wants to burrow down even more and that after it uh, identifies uses that are appropriate under the vision statement, that it then could choose to determine whether or not it wants to uh, identify locations for these uses, heights, um, uh, density. Uh, so I would look to the advisory to committee to make those decisions in that kind of priority. Councilmember Brzezinski. As the other member of the other committee, um, I don't disagree with the vice mayor's orientation. In fact, I think that's appropriate. But I don't see this as a never ending process. And we go back to spin this, um, this, this dialogue um, as if nothing has happened to this point. As I look at the, at the options offered us on page three, um, and in reviewing the 1999 draft specific plan, um, I, I found it very interesting um, in retrospect because we really have not addressed it specifically on the committee. It's been there as a document, but we've not addressed it. And once upon a time, I thought the draft plan was about 90% there. Now I think it's closer to maybe 80, 75%. Lots of things have changed in the last uh, you know, dozen years. And uh, from the perspective of what we know now, I think it's time for the, for the, um, the committee to take the vision statement and, and take those guiding principles and address the uses as indicated by the vice mayor, but also um, start to formulate a accept, reject orientation to those things that have been presented to us by staff and developer through this process to this point. I think we're ready to do that. But I, th I think we also need to be cognizant of the fact that once we've done this, then I, I would believe something's gotta come back to, to commission and council so that we can say, all right, this is, this is an appropriate application of the vision statement to the application as it's being formulated now. And, and once that's done and once we have that approval, then I think it's, you know, it would, be, it would behoove us to entertain an application, an actual application. Again, I don't wanna see us continue to, to move through this process as if it were never ending. Um, with that then, I would think that it's number two that needs to be our primary direction. And in terms of the current specific plan draft, I would ask the staff, my preference would be that the staff take a look at that, that current specific plan and, and glean those parts that seem to be applicable still. And there was a lot of work done that, uh, that has language that I think can apply to the, to the North 40 right now but there's an awful lot of language, for example, the exclusion of residential, um, you know, the, the primary direction of travel being this needs to be the, uh, the economic 
the economic machine for the town. I don't think those were things that the that have surfaced in the in the vision statement or from the committee at this point. Um, but after looking at that scene, there are some parts that can be used. Um, no sense reinve reinventing that part of the wheel. Let's let the committee take a look with with now our new our new vision, and and make the application to everything we've done to this point, and get ready to to move forward to the commission and council um, in a relatively efficient and um, and more immediate fashion than I think we are expecting at this point. Vice Mayor, thank you. Uh, I totally agree. Well, first of all, if, if I had to choose amongst uh, the one, two, and three on page three of our staff report, I would also agree with number two. Um, I totally agree that I don't want a never-ending process. Maybe that's because I've been working on this North 40 thing for like, I don't know, eight years. Um, so I agree with the never-ending process. Let's not do that. I agree that we are into the accept-reject uh, format, and that's why I say when I'm thinking through it myself, you go uses, and the advisory committee just accepts or rejects you know, uses, and then they get into what other elements do they want to uh, examine, i.e. height, and then they accept or reject heights. So I agree with the concept of streamlining it, and that's why I was very excited about getting past the vision statement because I think that the process can definitely move more expeditiously now than it ever has. Councilmember McNutt. Um, thank you, Mayor. Well, it's, it's quite encouraging to hear what the uh, two members of the advisory committee have to say, and um, I, I think if um, the advisory committee at the prodding of the council members uh, that sit on it can really at that next meeting um, come to grips with specific um, objectives and milestones that they know that it's real clear in their in their minds as to what it is they're trying to accomplish and that we lean towards the more general end product as as opposed to the more specific end product then I do think that there's going to be some um, achievements made. Uh, as I've thought about this more and more, I think, I mean, we hate to give up control as a council, as a, as a town, and um, that's always an issue. So I think one of the problems has been of having too much specifics in the specific plan. Uh, and we just, without seeing an actual application, without seeing what's really going to be proposed, how it all fits together, we don't want to just give away that um, that allowance or that approval. Um, and I think that's been a sticking point. So I'm uh, pleased with what I've heard. I don't think you need a motion on this. It was just consensus discussion, correct? We don't need a... Uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me, Mayor and Council. We don't need a motion on the process. That was simply to get Council consensus to guide staff to go back to the advisory committee. Okay, then I'm, I'm, I'll weigh in. I'm very comfortable with what I heard and actually encouraged by, dare I say, enthusiasm from the members of the subcommittee who sound like they feel like they've got enough to, to bring this to fruition in relatively short order. Councilmember uh, Persinski. There, there's only one other thing I think, and that's item number th or number three, um, and this is to to look at the um, the level of specificity. Uh, the, just to remind us that the committee also already agreed to a medium level, not the more general level, and I would still feel comfortable with what what we had determined earlier. I thought the general was too general and um, not, did not give uh, kind of the sense of direction that, that the committee could, could offer. Vice Mayor Spector. I'm gonna disagree with Mr. Brzezinski just once though. Um, I would actually defer to the advisory committee uh, to determine the level of, the number of issues uh, that it wants to weigh in on as far as accepting and rejecting. Um, and it may be that what is deemed here, uh, uh, called here the general, uh, might be what it chooses. But I, I would defer uh, to the advisory committee, and my inclination would probably be to have the issues be less rather than more. Councilmember Brzezinski. 
Uh, I think it's a matter of semantics, actually. Um, um, and, and I'm comfortable uh, just letting you two semantic <laughs> it yeah. out, you know? <laughs> um, but I don't disagree with the vice mayor's position. I, I think actually we're probably coincident in our points of view. It's just a matter of, of degree here. And um, so when we get back together, in effect, the committee will have to uh, affirm or deny its earlier position relative to the, the specificity of, uh, of, the, of the plan. But I think we've got direction to travel now. Okay, so I hear consensus there. I'll, I'm okay with it. Okay, so I think we have uh, council consensus. Anything else that you need from us on that? Good. Okay. Let me double check my agenda, but I think that was the last agenda item for the evening. I don't have anything else, Mr. Manager. He's already left the meeting. We are adjourned.